Welcome to the week 11 transactional tidbits where we give you a consumable perspective on ads, drops, and diagnostics for the week. To any new listeners, I'm Skylar. This is JWB. To any returning listeners, y'all are the absolute best. We're trying to get to 2,500 subscribers by the end of the season. Welcome. You're listening to JWB Fantasy Football. Thanks for listening. All right, as we go through players today, guys, please make sure that you go down into the comments and let us know who you need to drop in order to pick up these players, and we'll let you know if it is worthwhile, as well as how much fab we think is realistic at this point for these players. I'm going to get started with our must-ads for the week, as I always do. These are the top priority here. I'm going to start with some players that should be rostered in all of your leagues, but at this point, I feel obligated to mention. The first one is Trey McBride, who's rostered 64% of leagues, but he's a tight end one from here on out, so for the 36% of your leagues you don't have him, go pick him up. Next, Tank Dell. He may be a wide receiver too the rest of the season. If Nico Collins misses another week, he's a wide receiver one again this week. He's only rostering 76% of weeks. That should be 100%. Devin Singletary, if Damian Pierce is not able to go, he is solidly a mid to high RB2 next week against the Arizona Cardinals, who are our preferred streaming matchup for running backs. Rest of season, even if Damian Pierce is good to go, Devin Singletary is going to be a fringe RB2. I didn't expect 30 carries last week, but here we are, Devin Singletary. He is a must add. Last player in this section is going to be Joshua Dobbs. He's rostering 60% of leagues. He was the QB7, then the QB5, and now the QB3. Two of those performances came against very respectable opponents in Baltimore and New Orleans. And the next two matchups are the Denver Broncos and the Chicago Bears, who are 25th and 24th to opposing quarterbacks. Justin Jefferson may be coming back this week, if not next week. Joshua Dobbs is looking like a solid streamer. Next, we have our contextual ads, players that you can add, but it really depends on a lot of the details. These are where you need to go down and let us know your league settings, your league format, your league size. The first name on the list is going to be Ty Chandler. Alexander Madison is in concussion protocol. Cam Akers out for the rest of the season. Ty Chandler did well and got some volume this week once Alexander Madison went out. Next player is going to be Rashid Shahid, with Shahid being a fringe wide receiver three on the season. Already, he's proven to have weekly upside in the final flex spot of three wide receiver leagues. But with no Michael Thomas, who got both injured and arrested over the last week, Shahid may be in for a larger role. The next player is going to be Keaton Mitchell. He only had three rushes, but consecutive games with a 35-yard touchdown. Color me interested. I don't know if this is Devon Achan 2.0 type way here with the level of efficiency we're getting from Keaton Mitchell, but at minimum, he has to be on your bench here as we see if that role does develop into more volume. The next player is Luke Musgrave. He's got the charges in the lines the next two weeks. You can do much worse with tight end streamers if you're looking for a high-end tight end two or a fringe tight end one. Uh, Noah Brown, wide receiver two, and then the wide receiver seven. He's showing value if either Nico or Woods are out. Even if Nico comes back this week, he likely falls as a wide receiver four in my weekly rankings. He has proven upside and offensive throws for 300 plus yards routinely. Uh, I didn't think I'd be telling you guys to pick up Noah Brown. He was in our landmines two weeks ago and last week, I believe, but here we are. Uh, Noah Brown, I think, is a fine flex if you're a little desperate in your deeper leagues, that final flex spot. Uh, he can get it done for you. Next players are Trent Irwin and Tyler Boyd. Irwin's a wide receiver four if you need a filler next week. Whilst T. Higgins is out, he's come through twice as a fill-in already this year. And then Tyler Boyd, he's a French wide receiver two with no T. Higgins. He had a great week this past week. Next player is going to be Rico Dowdle. He's beginning to come out of his shell as a standalone, and he's a premium handcuff here behind Tony Pollard. The rest of the season schedule is very solid for running backs there in Dallas, should we look past the game versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Next player is going to be Brandon Cooks. will stay on the Dallas Cowboys, the first game over four targets since week three at Arizona. But with how strong Dallas is, Strength the schedule is for quarterbacks and wide receivers the rest of the way, already be the best in the league. This ad is worth the stash. Cooks is at least shown that he can get you a touchdown should he be forced to be in your starting lineup, and he hits a week where his volume regresses to his season average. Next player is going to be Jaden Reed. The lesson from last week is going to be that slot wide receivers versus the Pittsburgh Steelers are nearly must plays. With a good matchup versus the Chargers next week, Reed may have immediate wide receiver four usage and has rest the season upside as a back half rookie breakup candidate on an unproven depth chart. Next player to add is going to be Daryl Henderson Jr. I know that we said you can let go of Daryl Henderson two weeks ago, but we had assumed that Kyron Williams would return for week 11. With that now looking like week 12, you can add and play Henderson if you're desperate. Henderson likely ends up a risky RB3 in my rankings this week versus Seattle, who's 27th to opposing running backs. Pat Fryermuth is coming off of IR, guys, and I think he's worth the sash if you can. I likely do not play him this week, though. 
And as always, to get ahead of waivers, you can go check out our special team spotlight on Thursdays where we go past waivers on kickers and defensive streamers Ross in a less of 55 percent of weeks but here we try to get ahead of the waivers i'm going to drop a few names for you and i actually have more than usual this week we'll see how many of these stay under 55 percent and get into our special team spotlight but i digress first one is going to be the miami dolphins versus the las vegas raiders while this is my favorite play for this week although the raiders are 24th on the season to opposing defenses the dolphins schedule after the raiders goes the jets commanders titans jets Miami might be a team that you pick up and just set and forget for the next five weeks. And for a lot of managers, that's very worthwhile. Next is going to be the Washington Commanders at the New York Giants, who are 32nd against opposing defense on the year. Anytime you can play a defense against DeVito, this is the move. The Detroit, the Detroit Lions versus the Chicago Bears, who are 30th to opposing defenses. If Justin Fields does not go, Detroit is a very good streamer. And then last, we have Jacksonville Jaguars with Tennessee Titans, who are 20th to opposing defenses, but they're 24th in their last two. We've got a solid defense against a rookie quarterback in this one. You can do much worse for streamers. And then for kickers, Matt Amendola, the Texans kicker with Kymie Fairburn out versus the Arizona Cardinals. The 18th against opposing kickers so far on the season. I like this Houston Texas offense in its entirety against Arizona next week. Uh, Riley Patterson for the Detroit Lions versus the Chicago Bears, who are 26th against opposing kickers. He's heating up two top 12 weeks in a row. The Bears are an ideal matchup. Patterson is a good streamer. Jason Myers for the Seattle Seahawks at the Los Angeles Rams, who are 29th to opposing kickers on the season. This is part two of the Get Right Tour for the Seattle Seahawks. Jason Myers is a good streamer. Brandon McManus is our last guy here for the Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Tennessee Titans, uh, who are 30th against opposing kickers on the season. Brandon McMahon has disappointed us this past week as one of our streamer calls, but the Titans were always the more appealing of the two-week stretch that we added Brandon McManus for. And before we get into our next section, as always, I drop a couple landmines plays to avoid that I see up on the trending pages. First one's going to be Jalen Guyton, who is just, it's just a deep threat here for the Los Angeles Chargers, with Joshua Palmer out. Quentin Johnson's not really stepped up in the way we would have liked, but I find it hard to believe that we will be able to predict where touchdowns away from Austin Eckler and Keenan Allen will go. I can't see myself starting Guyton anywhere with confidence. Next player is going to be Tanner Hudson. Two solid performances, but neither of them cracked the top 12 for tight ends, and the next two weeks versus the Baltimore Ravens and the Pittsburgh Steelers are not ideal on paper. The last player that I'm avoiding is going to be Latavius Murray. He got the score, but he's otherwise nothing more than just contingent value, getting over 10 carries just once this season. Murray's really just touchdown or bust. There's also no guarantee that an injury to James Cook would result in a huge uptick in volume with Leonard Fournette chilling on the practice squad. I'm going to skip a couple of the other sections. Just going to get into our diagnostic section here for you guys and go over the injuries on the week. We have quite a few. It was a light week in terms of injuries that happened within the week, but overall, there are a lot of players either coming back off IR or players who just had little, little pickups. So we're going to start with Alexander Madison, who picked up a concussion. He's in protocols. It's looking like he's not going to be playing this upcoming weekend. So we got Taylor Heineke. He exited the game with a hamstring. He does have a bye week next week, but I expect Desmond Ritter to be under setter in week 12 when they come back. Deshaun Watson, ankle injury, Saturday next week's 50-50. Here we go again. Your guess is as good as mine. This is one we're going to have to monitor into the week. Derek Carr injured his shoulder and picked up a concussion. They do luckily have a bye. Desperate two quarterback league banners can add Jameis Winston, but the bye week should be Good for Saints and Carr, who both would ideally want to be on the field in Week 12. It doesn't look promising for Carr at the moment, but it's one that we're going to have to monitor and get clarity with next week. T. Higgins with his hamstring. It's looking like he's going to miss another week. Trent Irwin is a wide receiver four in his absence, and Tyler Boyd a fringe wide receiver two. Pat Frymuth is looking like he is coming off of the IAR for his hamstring, and he will be playing this week. So uh, it's a player that I don't want in my lineups, but it's a player I'm well worth stashing and seeing on Khalil Herbert in his ankle injury. His status for next week is unclear. They haven't taken him off the IR yet, which is surprising. I had thought a week ago that he was going to play. And here we are two weeks later and he's not yet cleared. Uh, we said to cut down to Foreman when Herbert was still out before last week. And this was a bad call. The, the, the return doesn't seem as imminent as we had thought. So Foreman's a fringe RB2 streaming option in the meantime, Justin Fields, the same team there with his thumb. His status for next week is also unclear, which is just hard to believe here. He nearly went in week 10 against Carolina. I find it hard to believe he misses again, but should he miss time 
which is still on the table. The Detroit Lions defense is a fantastic streaming option. Next player is Michael Thomas, who injured his knee this weekend and got arrested. He's not going to play next week, having followed up that arrest with the knee injury. Uh, Thomas's fringe water Super 5 campaign may effectively be over. Devon Achan with his knee. He's 50-50 for next week. He was elevated off of IR, which is a fantastic sign, but there was no confirmation whether or not he plays this week. This will begin a 21-day window for the next decision. Jalen Watt on his knee, good to go. Karen Williams in his knee. He's going to be out another week, but we're expecting him back in week 12. Daryl Henderson Jr. is a risky RB3 this week, and Royce Freeman is a fringe RB3 just solely on his floor in deep leagues. I don't see the ceiling there. Touchdown or bust in that department. Traylon Burks concussion is in protocols. We'll see how he progresses. Zay Jones, knee injury arrest. He followed the Michael Thomas mold here. He's likely out next week. The Jaguars still haven't given us a direction on Zay Jones' knee injury designation, being IR or practicing. We don't necessarily know yet. We will have to stand by for updates. It does not help his case being arrested for domestic battery today. Nico Collins and his calf. He's likely in for next week, having practiced in full on Friday. Nico was trending the right way before they announced that he'd miss Sunday after that practice. Uh, with his progression, I'd like to think that he's still in for this week, but we're going to have to wait for updates. If he does not go for some reason, Tank Dell is going to be a wide receiver one, and Noah Brown will be a wide receiver three. Matthew Stafford and his thumb, he's leaning in for this week. That's what they're saying, but we're going to have to wait and see uh, on a confirmed update if he plays. Hopefully that this is the start of a better trend here for Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua. In the event he does not go, Carson Wentz was signed as the assumed backup quarterback uh, for Matthew Stafford. Justin Jefferson and his hamstring, 50-50 to come back next week. Kevin O'Connell said that week 10 would have been a little aggressive. He's yet to be activated off of the IR. We're going to have to have patience with this one. Updates will come midweek. I really don't think they want to rush him into this one, especially with how well they've been doing and how poor the division has been doing as of late. Last player in our injury section here is Damian Pierce with his ankle injuries, 50-50 for next week. Arizona is the ideal matchup if Pierce does come back. Both him and Singletary are fringe RB2s. If Pierce does miss time, Devin Singletary is a must-start RB2. But that does it here for us, guys, on the JW Transactional Tidbit Show. If you enjoyed or you got, took anything away from this video, please make sure that you like and subscribe. We're trying to get to 2,500 subscribers by the end of the video. You can find all things JW at JW underscore FF on Twitter. The pin tweet has where you can find our full team and where everything is going on. JW Fantasy Football on all platforms. Please go sh make sure you follow. Use code JWB on Underdog if you want to do any in-season competitions. Therefore, a deposit match up to $100 as a first-time depositor in the description you're going to find a couple of links to the patreon you can get my show sheet notes for this and all the shows i do throughout the week as well as full dynasty rankings and full access to my dms for less than a dollar a week go check it out and then the clips cut away is also in the description we've taken every single player it's pretty self-explanatory once you go in there if we don't have to take on the players please go into our discord which is also in the description it's absolutely free and you can tag me and recommend some players and we'll fit them into a video if we can that does it for me and i will catch you guys next week